Hi everybody, I'm Patrick, this is Corey, that is Laloid, and on the end there is Andrew. We are at the Cloak and Blaster, we just got done playing Supreme Leader. Join us for Supreme Leader. Supreme. And Supreme. Lloyd was actually the Leader. Supreme. Should we? Yes. Lloyd always Lloyd. wins. So if you gentlemen don't mind, I'm going to take the liberty of explaining what Supreme Leader kind of sort of is in the way of a game. We all vote for you. Oh, <laughs> you certainly did. All of you voted for me to leave the game. So uh, in the course of the game, it's got a marketplace that's laid out and you have to have both money and influence to be able to purchase cards at that marketplace. Each character has a variable player power. That player also, each character also has a certain amount of income that you get every turn and a certain amount of influence. and. During your turn, you draw your, you get your, your money, you get your, your income, your revenue, you spend it buying cards. The next turn, you actually, when you get those cards, you can use them right away, and that has a variable power as well sometimes. Sometimes they're used up, sometimes they are a continuous state. Um, and then the turn goes around, then everyone votes for who's going to get essentially voted out. That person who's voted out is actually voted into the UN. Um, and essentially, kind of, sort of, they're maimed or lamed, and they're kind of, sort of, uh, taken out of a lot of aspects of the game. Then an event card flipped over, and that event card itself actually changes the course of the game and how it plays next, and how our special abilities and, and whatnot affect each other. In a very, very brief synopsis, 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 that is how to play the game. Corey. If you had to pick out one thing that you liked the most about Supreme Leader, what's it going to be? That I am the Supreme Leader. You weren't, though. I was. Well, you, well, well, I, was the, I was in the, well, well, you were the, I was in the UN. I was Brian. in the UN. Uh, I would have to go with uh, the theme. The theme was pretty cool. Um, I'm not really into politics, but this one fit. So Kind of historical politics, and they had characters politics. that weren't alive Correction. at the same time. And I don't think they actually had any political agenda just the way the, the, yeah. the game worked together but you're right I think that was a very positive thing about the game Mr. Lloyd, if you had to pick one thing you didn't like about the game one thing I didn't like um, the, the end game is a, is a bit weird um, you go around voting until people are eliminated into the UN until there's two people left and then the rules get a little foggy there. it says there's only one way to supreme victory, which is to have a card that immediately eliminates another player. Or, if you can't, you have to go to a vote, which then you debate. But looking through the deck, I only found three cards that could actually, that I understood maybe a character power could do it, but there was only three cards in the deck, I think, that could actually give you that supreme victory. So it almost always comes down to that debate. And that was like a, those cards were all nuclear based, right? They're yeah, they, like were all, a... they, were all, they all had nuclear in the title somewhere. That was that was probably the one thing that I disliked was that just that kind of end state. Yeah, I can see that, Andrew. If you had to pick one thing that you liked, one thing I liked the, the most. most. Yeah, the most. The, the I, most. I know the most. It was implied before you ever said it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the thing I think I liked the most was uh, the event cards. So the event cards kind of fluctuate what you want to do per turn. So one of the event cards were like whoever had the most money has potential to go in the vote the next time. So we're all kind of trying to throw our money and get rid of it all in one turn, whereas sometimes you want to save the money, so it kind of changes the strategy you want to go for that round. That was a really fun turn, and I, I agree. It also keeps the game fresh, and it, it it definitely mixes it up every single time you play, because you're not going to hit every one of those event cards, I wouldn't think. But if I had to pick something out that I like the least of the game, I think a lot of these cards and a lot of these abilities are going to contradict each other. Contradict each other? Contradict each other. Anyway, they're going to mix each other up. So. We need a little bit more polish on the rules for the version that we got. Now this is a pre-production copy, and I'm sure when it goes to Kickstarter, it's gonna be a little more polished then. And heck, you know, there's lots of games that polish them up even after they've they've uh, established themselves on Kickstarter. So that's the one thing that I say is maybe a little bit more polish, work on those rules just a little bit. But other than that, there's some really, really fun aspects. That one that you mentioned, Andrew, I thought was probably the funnest rounds where he was scrambling around trying to get rid of the cash, which is, I thought, probably awesome. So. I'm Patrick, that's Corey, that's Lloyd. 
That is CG. We are at the Cloak and Blaster, and we just got done playing Supreme Leader. Oh, speaking of voting, did you guys vote today? I did not. Of course. I, I voted for Loy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I won the primary. <laughs>